All right, all right, good night. Um, just wanted to make this quick video about uh, some of the changes I'm making to my own portfolio. Uh, essentially, I got rid of, uh, I've been trying, I'm, well, I'm working towards consolidating my portfolio so I don't spread my money too thin and I'm only investing in companies, one, that I believe in, two, that are giving me better uh, dividends and returns. So I evaluated these stocks um, by looking at what they've done in the past year, because I'm coming up on to I'm coming up to the one year mark for my investing. I started February 24th, and I'm close. I'm pretty much right on top of that right now, a month away. Um, and I want to uh, work towards rebalancing uh, my portfolio and um, just also reassessing things. So seeing how things have worked over a year or so or even some newer uh, newer uh, positions that I've picked up. Also finally getting rid of some of my bonds. Um, of course in this environment they are underperforming. They have been underperforming for quite a bit of time. So really it's kind of time to get rid of the dead weight. I think there's only one bond where I was like negative maybe not probably negative less than two to two dollars or something like that. But I didn't have a lot of money in, in it at all. Um, but this is another reason why I have about or what reason why I would like to um, consolidate uh, my portfolio because of the simple fact that there's way too many positions. I think I have about like 70. Uh, let me look at my phone here. I think I have about like total of 70 something position, 74, 76 positions in my passive income portfolio. And I want to cut that down. So, yeah, I'm at 74 positions. Um, I put in ten thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars and thirteen cents um, and I have I'm up fifty one point ninety three percent overall on the portfolio um, and so that's a cash value of five thousand five hundred and forty six dollars and eight cents so what I want to do is any money that I put in from now on um, once I start actually getting closer to a point where I want to rebalance which I'm uh, just getting used to investing and get in with me getting started in the market I want to try and do it like once a year some people do it uh, once a quarter uh, semi-annual or, or yeah semi-annually <laughs> I think yeah so it's like half halfway through the year or every six months and some people just do it yearly I plan on trying to do it yearly because I want to see these stocks run um, and then make little changes here and there so I'm really going through and kind of uh, cutting the grass on that on this one and uh, trimming things up pruning this little bonsai I got so um, we'll go through this list here and first we'll work we'll um, focus on the sale uh, the cells um, so I'm getting rid of Comcast I had quite a bit of money in it but um, the way I'm looking at Comcast I can actually put that money to other stocks that can actually grow in value also using seeking alpha and their dividend history chart I can see that it doesn't have a dividend yield that um, I would really like. And I want to probably put this money into something where um, CMCSA, something that can actually, I can probably get a little bit more volume on. So if I look at the dividend history on this, the last quarter, um, I got 20, uh, you would get 23 cents a share on that. So I don't want something like this to take up. Um, space in my portfolio and I could probably put it to other things that can actually uh, either grow excuse me I'm sorry uh, that can actually either grow in value or give me a better dividend payout um, so things like Visa, Procter Gamble, Coca-Cola just getting rid of those Blizzard Activision that was a bit of a play in terms of like what they do in terms of gaming but with me, with me not putting much money into it, it doesn't really make sense. Literally, the position was only $18. So all these positions, this is the total that I had in there in terms of um, uh, what I actually invested. Uh, all these positions I'm actually selling, I think maybe all but one or two, I'm actually selling in with a profit, very small profit, but a profit nonetheless. Um, so I'm net positive on all of these positions here. So it's like, okay, get out of it and then put it into other positions that will uh, that I can hold for a longer period of time, giving me better dividends and also increasing in value and or sorry and or also increasing in value. Uh, so Verizon, I didn't have much into that. And then in terms of the year, probably um, in terms of the past year, it probably only went up 
sorry, not even the past year, but as long as I've had it, it probably only went up about 2%. In some of these, such as like Marvell, Team, even Activision, Blizzard, um, I have not had them for long. Now, if I hold them for a longer period of time, then yeah, that would work, that would be great. But I also have to look at, okay, how long would I have to hold this to actually get a better profit or actually be in a better position on this in terms of um, uh, yeah, just getting better profit? Um, when I could take that money and put it into something else and get stronger positions and get even more dividends, uh, if anything. So like Noble, the dividend aristocrats, uh, Corning, I've actually done pretty well on that in terms of what they do. That's in my telecommunications pie. Um, Eric, uh, Sony Ericsson, or Ericsson, sorry. Um, that's another one in the telecommunications pie. Target actually has a great dividend. Costco, solid company. Oracle, solid long-term comp company. Doesn't have uh, high value growth or anything like that, but they have products in terms of software and hardware, um, but they are pretty much getting beaten out in some other spaces. And they would be one, if, if anything, that would probably be uh, good to drop um, but I like to keep them around because of the simple fact that I like their story. I like what they do in terms of um, the larger enterprise com companies that they have. And then they have they offer software, service. Um, and then even under the service arm, they offer a lot in terms of consulting and then uh, support. And then also, um, as much as I hate Oracle using their software uh, and their products now with their newer stuff, they charge for every little single thing. Now there is one, at one point in terms of like me being a computer consultant and a computer nerd and getting uh, getting a little bit deeper into some of these things. I remember reading an article where they said um, that Oracle at one point wanted, or no, is either Oracle or RAID, RAID card drivers, they actually wanted to charge you uh, if you wanted certain RAID levels. So if you wanted RAID zero or RAID one, they would charge you for each and every RAID level. So if you understand what RAID cards do, they actually allow for a redundancy or faster performance depending on the um, RAID level that you use. Uh, zero is usually never, uh, or zero is not a big deal anymore because you had faster drive, so there's no point in really doing zero unless you want like balls to the wall speed, but make sure you have a backup because one side of that RAID level goes down or one disc in that RAID array goes down, you're screwed. So, um, but they wanted to charge, uh, some of these companies wanted to actually charge for different RAID levels. Well, Oracle does something like that in terms of using their software uh, or even some of their hardware. They would charge you, um, you would have to unlock certain features in the har hardware or working on the software. So, or the software on the hardware. So for instance, the hardware would be there to maybe do 10 gigabits per second but you have to actually have a software component uh, or software license key or something like that so that you can actually get the full throughput of a network port or something like that on their uh, one of their servers. Um, Cisco does this, uh, or sorry, Cisco can do things like this as well with their latest, um, uh, their latest offerings in terms of um, computer, um, what's it called, computer networking equipment. So they'll sell you a, a device that can actually do 10 gigs per second on a port, but what they will do is actually uh, put a govern on it to where you can't do all of that and you would have to buy a proper license for that. Um, they they were doing that in their, man, they were doing that, forgot what line of cards that they did that in. Uh, if I'm incorrect on that, please just correct me on the comment section but it was something that I remember reading about a long time ago. Um, but it was kind of like the holy grail because um, a lot of times they would release this information, or sorry, they would release these um, devices and they couldn't make any money after the initial sale. So they would try to sell you service or anything else and then software updates, but then they couldn't do things like, okay, well, you want this hardware, um, but you don't want you know the high-end features so what we would do is sell it to you at a little bit cheaper rate and then if you want you can grow into the hardware so um, Oracle does things like that too where um, certain services uh, you have to un you have to pay to unlock uh, Broco or Brocade Brocade I think it's like Brocade uh, would do the same thing as well Brocade which is AVGO um, which is actually done very well um, in the past year 
Uh, so going down a little bit more, Intel is one of those stocks where that's another long term like Oracle. I don't see explosive growth from them, but every so often they release something that's really nice. Uh, but really, it's kind of one of those things where it's just a blah company. It's like a boring company. You know it's going to be there unless some other chip manufacturer comes out. And if that's the case, either Intel or AMD is going to buy them up um, unless they just are not allowed to. Uh, Cisco, uh, as I said, they're just they're also one of those companies in that space too. Then they also, I believe, offer a dividend. Uh, I have a theory or I have a hypothesis. Uh, uh, I have an hypothesis. Somebody corrected me on that. A uh, uh, friend in a group chat corrected me on that. But I have a hypothesis in terms of um, in terms of uh, storage and how important that's going to be in terms of uh, deduplication and block level or block level deduplication, software level uh, encryption, compression, and things like that. Whereas uh, services or um, service providers. Uh, will need more storage. They're always going to need storage, but they're going to need smarter storage. So if you're into computers, again, ZFS, uh, which I believe was created by somebody at Oracle, um, and they open sourced it, or maybe it was, a, I forgot what the story was behind ZFS, but they pretty much created a better software RAID implementation that didn't need an actual physical RAID card, and actually um, was... Uh, totally against using physical RAID cards. Uh, and really, you just needed the adapters and you just needed uh, a whole bunch of drives and it would be controlled by this software. And this software, every release, they would add a new feature to it and then improve older features as well. So um, Pure Storage, uh, NTAP, or, or sorry, NetApp, they're another storage provider, uh, storage software and storage um, uh, what's it called storage equipment uh, provider another one which is not on here looks like it's not being bought is Nutanix uh, they're another one that's pretty big in data centers before I actually left working in an actual data center um, of course Apple space uh, or SPCE uh, Virgin Galactic uh, again I, this is a pretty small holding but it's done well it has really done well in the uh, past year so I need to put more money to that. This is another reason why I have to consolidate because now I'm not putting money towards things that are actually moving and doing very well. So th some things that I feel that will not perform well over a long period of time or don't don't give me the actual dividends, uh, just getting rid of them. Um, going down this list, AMAT, I, Applied Materials, they're pretty much the chip manufacturers that help that make the machines that the chip manufacturers use. So all the machines that do the layered printed circuit boards and things like that, Applied many, uh, applied Materials actually makes the machines that do that. Um, so they're kind of like the, uh, the man behind the curtain or the man behind the man, the foundation of a lot of these chip manufacturers um, in terms of uh, on the... Uh, Oh man, on the manufacturing side. So they're just people that you really don't hear about. And I got this as a bit of a stock tip from a YouTube video. I'm not going to lie. Um, Qualcomm. So Qualcomm, they've actually done very well too. But Qualcomm, the reason why I got into them uh, is that they actually have a really, they have a lot, a lot of patents. They're again, the man behind the man in terms of um, all the chip stuff that they do. Uh, or chip manufacturing that they do. So definitely uh, uh, people that I really, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just seeing something here on my screen that's really off, weird. Sorry about that. Um, but they're, uh, in terms of telecommunications, they're, they're the ones that pull kind of the puppet strings um, as far as I know. So they're a buy that I, I will continue to put more into Qualcomm as especially with the, um, the deployment of 5G and um, the uh, the blocking of Huawei in uh, certain countries, I believe Qualcomm, Qualcomm can actually take advantage of that over time. Um, and, and I'm sure there's other com uh, companies that do great things in telecommunications. Please let me know if anything. Uh, and then, of course, some of the uh, ETFs in my um, bonds and ETF pie. Uh, so the S&P 500 or the Vanguard's version of the S&P 500, uh, Vanguard International High Dividend Yield, just so I can get a little bit more uh, exposure to the international market. 
and the Vanguard Healthcare ETF. I made this, uh, I made these recent a recent buy into this based off of some of the things that Ark is investing into, and I like to get um, a Vanguard equivalent to certain things because I like the way they manage um, uh, manage their uh, what's it called uh, manage the holdings within their um, their products, um, and then the small cap ETF. Uh, instead of just going for your S&P 500, but going for those small cap companies as well, there's actually some money in that. In some cases, those companies are uh, not, say, penny stocks or anything, but they're more like uh, they're your smaller companies that you probably wouldn't invest in or put a, a large amount of money in, but there's a little bit of diversification in there. Um, and I just listened to a video about diversification, how, how Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett uh, uh, you know, uh, some other people, uh, I think Peter, Peter Lynch, I think it's Peter, Peter Lynch, but, uh, how they feel about, um, diversification and how stupid it is. But, um, uh, it's just something I'm used to. And I like the stocks that I've actually picked, uh, and even some of the ETFs that I've picked as well. Uh, they, they pretty much a lot of people say it's like, or sorry, people that know better in a sense of, uh, investing, they look at, uh, diversification as, <laughs> a way for ignorant people to invest, which is okay, it works. But at the same time, if you actually studied the company and really looked into them, then <laughs> then you would see that, hey, listen, you don't need an ETF. You can just pick really good um, really good stocks. I'll probably link the, uh, the video I was listening to on my way home. But uh, yeah, so uh, essentially I will be selling or these will be selling in the next trading day, which will be on Tuesday since there's Martin Luther King Day on Monday. Um, it shows two that are excluded, which is VOIM and MDB, MongoDB. I like using their software and I use that. I use it quite a bit or actually I use it for all my backend database stuff in time in time I'm working on projects. So um, when I build APIs and things like that and store mostly my information in a JSON format, or uh, yeah, in BJSON format, then um, I can, uh, I actually, sorry, I can look at them and say, okay, I really believe in their product and what they're doing. And I can see it from when I'm using um, all these different, uh, or when I'm listening to all these different tutorials, they're using MongoDB heavily in terms of um, newer web applications and APIs and things like that, where your database, if you work with databases like SQL and stuff like that, it's hard to make changes to tables because it also sometimes would require you to make changes in your code as well. Um, but with JSON or with uh, MongoDB, the code drives the schema of the actual database if you understand that information. Um, but essentially it, it, uh, it drives the way, the makeup of the actual database because of one, it's a no SQL document based database as in terms of or as opposed to a table based database that uses or a relational database that uses columns and rows to organize data so you can actually do things like indexing and stuff like that relational databases are better in a lot of cases and even faster than mongodb but um mongodb in terms of the way they look at database um database queries and uh database um like database storage uh, is really kind of nice and it's really on the, you could say web, I mean, we're already in web 2.0, but it's like web 2.0 to 3.0, if you will, if I can actually make that a uh, bit of a reach there. But um, yeah, so essentially I had to turn off auto invest in M1 finance to kill some of these things in these different pies and or in the different pies that I had. Some of these companies are good, you know, your Coca-Cola, your Procter & Gamble, your Visa, those are good companies and you can stick with them, even uh, Verizon, you can stick with them, even Marvell, you can stick with them. But um, I'm really seeing where I'm spreading myself thin, so I'm going from 74 positions down to 64 positions. In fact, I'd probably like to cut a little bit more, but it was kind of hard because I was seeing some of my numbers and I was surprised at how well some of these companies did. And it was like, wow, I need to do this really badly because I could have invested into companies that were doing 100% gains in this bull market. And also another reason is prepping for the next bear market and um, kind of trimming the fat because even some of these companies are going to drop off and do badly or do poorly. 
some of these companies and ETFs are just not going to do well in this next bear market. And I want to prepare so I can actually scoop them up, um, you know, and then also uh, trim the fat even more if necessary so I can have a really nice lean portfolio. I wouldn't mind something where it's like 50 something positions. Some people say that's a little bit too much, uh, especially if you listen to this video that I'm going to put on uh, that I'm going to post. Uh, it's from Solving the Money Problem. Uh, he's a, a huge Tesla bull, but he he's all about his in terms of his diversification. I think he probably invests in probably about two stocks and that's about it. It's Tesla and maybe one other. <laughs> so um, he, it's definitely, uh, you know, uh, food for thought in terms of, OK, how you're running your portfolio. And, and also, what if I had 70 something positions and only a thousand dollars? It doesn't make any sense. Hopefully I will be doing a video pretty soon where I'm semi interviewing my nephew type of uh, or really showing him how to get started and getting an investment account going. Um, if I don't actually if he doesn't consent to being recorded, then what I'll actually do is um, is what I'll actually do is uh, just come back at the end of it talking about what I did to help him to get started and um, how I'm trying to help him and then some of the other young people that I know get into investing and put them in a better place in the long run as always thanks for listening uh and i hope this helps somebody out there and you know do your research uh take anything i say with a grain of salt if you're not taking what i say with a grain of salt then you're low on sodium this is not investing advice advice this is just what i'm actually doing i hope this helps you out and uh yeah peace have a nice one